Uh, yes, continuing where I left off, I've been having uh, cat interruption issues and battery interruption issues. You can tell this is a low budget uh, operation, but the where I was going with it is is that the reason that intuitive healers may not have consistent effectiveness is because they may not uh, their healing may not be based on knowledge. They may not understand the basic concept of this polarity and of course it's understandable because even when you look in in the yogic traditions or uh, the whole range of perspectives very rarely have I seen even in the you know um, Taoist you know um, kind of perspective I don't really see this kind of model or description of things um, this is a different understanding of the human being and and it actually I remember years ago I had been part of a discussion group and the 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 question was you know how do we identify or one of the questions was how do we identify the the psychic phenomena or the subtle energies of the human being um, in order to measure them and one of the points that I realized was is that in order to measure these things we had to identify the intersection points between the physical body and these forces but now I realize that the intersection point is at every point in the physical body and this is why it's problematical so if we don't start out from a place of understanding the basic forces i.e. magnetism that shape and form the basic uh, pattern and structure and form of the, the human body then we won't really be able to visualize these um, forces and their intersection and interplay and, and how and as, if you look at this this drawing if you look at it closely what you can see is there's essentially an interweaving of these uh, essentially of the magnetic force the magnetic forces if you will they're interweaving all of the substances of the human body together into form whether those substances are you know solids liquids gases plasmas likewise in each of these one thing that's interesting about this image is it's indistinct so there's certain things that are missing like the specific frequencies of bones and for instance of lungs but you can see the outline of forces and patterns where bones and and you know hip and a pelvis you know and hips and so on and lungs and ribs and so on and the the hemispheres of the brain you can see where they can all come into play um, through specific frequencies so frequency is another principle right along with magnetism which has to be incorporated into a physics of psychology now of course also what this also I think may show is the beginnings of if we can precisely map this kind of model onto the physical body and get it accurate we can pinpoint precisely not only the magnetic forces and currents in the human body but also the electrical currents and that could be very useful um, but as I, I pointed out the the relevance of this this perspective of the human being ties back to these practical implications or act applications for health you know rejuvenation etc well-being and it it ties into specific possibilities such as bone regeneration and limb re limb regeneration and basically what you would have to do is you would have to apply so for instance say there was a broken bone say you know right here 
okay, right in, in, in this, in the right calf or what have you. Now what you would have to do is you'd have to apply the correct magnetic polarity, which is shown on this clockwise spin of the right, right side of the body. So that would be one thing you'd have to do. You'd also then, because you want to apply the dominant um, magnetic polarity. So for instance, if, if you were trying to do, say, hands-on healing to yourself or to others, I think the correct way to do it is to take your right hand and apply it to the right side of your body, and then take your left hand and apply it to the left side of your body. I think that's the correct way to do hands-on healing, whether, whether you, you in, include contact or at a distance. I think that that's the correct way to apply the polarities. But what you would do to, to do bone regeneration, and, and in the same principle for limb re regeneration actually too, which is you get the correct magnetic polarity depending on whether it's on the left or right side of the body, and you apply that to the region. Then you have to isolate the frequency. There's a frequency that this bone carries or resonates at, and you need to you need to actually apply that frequency to the region in order to help to regenerate that bone, the frequency, that specific frequency that it has. And of course, you need to apply electricity. It may even be necessary to, um, as a mediating kind of substance or medium, if you will, um, you may have to incorporate or, or infuse specific gases or even maybe liquids, fluids into that region that can kind of fill that region with a gas that can, as electrical current is run through it, can become a plasma and help in the reformation of the bone. Also, what you need is circulation. You need the circulation of, of fluids, you know, blood and so on. And you also need nutrients in there. You need the solid nutrients that will actually, you need to infuse them into that whole region so that there's plenty of nutrients to regenerate that bone. I really think if you bring all of these factors into play, you can regenerate bones and as well as regenerating limbs relatively easy. You have to take the limb and again, the same thing, the correct magnetic polarity overall and maybe you'll have, you know, it'll be much more specific than that, a whole interplay of magnetic currents and polarities. The correct frequency, you have to, you have to take this arm, essentially, and recreate it, regenerate it in frequency, apply electricity, produce plasmas and, and gas, gaseous plasma kind of substances here. You also have to bring in circulation. You have to have circulation, and which is fluids, and you have to bring in nutrients, which are solids. And I think all of this is well within the realm of feasibility according to this model of the human being based on magnetism, electricity, frequency, gases, you know, plasmas, gases, liquids, and solids rather than any other kind of perspective of human beings, whether you it's some quantum kind of nonsense or any number of other, you know, purely chemical, biological kind of things. So I think this is a much better model. Now the question, you know, someone might immediately ask, well, if this is true, well, how do we test it? How do we research it? How do we, you know, figure this out? Um, I think the best way to do it is to start with a new kind of science, which I'm kind of tentatively calling magnetoplasma cymatics, which would be what you're doing is you're creating a plasma tube. You're taking that plasma tube, you're filling it with gas, obviously, you're running electrical current through it, you're creating a plasma, and then you're also applying magnetic polarities, magnetic currents, and you're applying specific frequencies. And the aim or the goal of this kind of research is to take those four variables, electricity, plasma, magnetism, and frequency, 
and create a three-dimensional form in three-dimensional form things various kind of structures shapes patterns that replicate um, what we see in nature so if we can with this kind of technology if we could create a human form in a plasma kind of medium in a magnetic plasma frequency if if we could create essentially a magnetic frequency magnetic plasma frequency form that looks like a human face or a human arm or a human leg or any other kind of natural structure then we've we've proven this basic theory is correct and that that is how we regenerate uh human you know bones regenerate limbs this is how the you know uh, the the well, I don't know if it's a salamander or whatever it is that regenerates its limbs this is how it happens and it's also the the model or the pattern for our natural growth and development and so when we apply when we see any kind of abnormal kind of growth and development going on any kind whether it's down syndrome or anything else we can apply the correct magnetic polarities to the left and right side of the bodies, right sides of the body. We can apply the correct uh, electrical currents, the correct frequencies, and also bring in whatever substances, whether gaseous, plasma, liquid, or solid. And we can correct these things right from the beginning. And I mean, I, I don't see why not. I don't see why we can't solve uh, uh, many of these problems and address probably most if not all of our health concerns or problems it, it doesn't mean that there won't be a place for you know um you know doctors that there won't be a place for technicians that there won't be a place for uh you know kind of nutrient kind of mixes but you know the all of the pharmac pharmacological type of remedies will not be relevant you know it will all be about these new kind of technologies that come with this kind of perspective um, so that's the basic premise um, I hope that this kind of gives a better insight into some of my other videos for those who actually have watched them and maybe it will kind of inspire people to try to map these magnetic currents out and like I said this whole concept comes directly from Albert Roy Davis and Walter C. Rawls magnetism their book magnetism and its effects on the living system as well as another book that they have the rainbow in your hands I recommend both of these books if you want to understand have you know the beginnings of a correct if we can start to begin to correctly understand these things then we're on the right track so, thank you.